I've been working as a photographer and in the photo business for 35 plus years. Um, I shoot, uh, I've shot everything from House of Representatives in Washington to movie posters to uh, everything and anything that you can think of. Um, and I sold photography products and work with companies. I work with a company called the Mac Group for 20 years. I work with another company. Uh, and now I'm working with another company called Profoto, which is the lighting company. You guys may be familiar with them. And um, the, the, the idea or the plan for today is to briefly go through the B1 and the B2, explain to you about the product, what the features are, and then really the main thing is to do hands-on. So did anybody here bring cameras today? Okay, great. Does everybody have cards in their cameras today? So if I can ask, who has Nikon cameras? Who has, who has uh, what's that other company? Canon cameras? And who has other? Okay, so other, we're good. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up two shooting stations, um, one with one model. One of the models is here already, hi. And then we're gonna shoot up, set up another station with the other model, and I'll ha we'll have two people working both sides. One will be for the uh, B1, and one will be for the B2. And um, you'll step up, and we will literally show you hands-on how to use the product. Um, I'm gonna start up here and show it to you after we're done with uh, just a brief pre presentation. Uh, but I would love for you guys to get literally hands-on because for me as a photographer and as not the brightest guy in this room, um, it takes me a lot, uh, a lot to learn something. Once I get it in my head, like they literally use me as the lowest common denominator. But once I get it in my head, I have it in my head and then I can do it. All right? Um, for, but, but the thing that makes me learn it the best is actually using the product. Uh, and I also want to show you folks how easy this stuff is to use. But the, the cool part about this system that we're about to talk about here today, and I'll go through it with you, is that I have been doing this, again, I've been in the business for about 30 plus years. And um, in all the 30 years I've been in the business, I've never come up, I've never worked with a product or introduced a product that has this much popularity. It is crazy. It just hit, these two products hit a niche market that didn't exist before. Uh, there may have been a market for it before, but nobody was doing it. And, um, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy in the very beginning, I was part of the whole discussion about what it should be and how it came out, and they made a lot of different changes other than I had suggested, but they did, but, but definitely they were right. I mean, this thing, when the B1 came out, it literally was the most exciting product in that year uh, in the photography field. Um, and, the, and there were new cameras introduced then, and I believe this one was really amazing. Um, so the other camera that you shoot with is what brand of camera? Sony. Sony, okay. So, um, uh, so right now we are TTL, and I'll go through it, but we are TTL for Canon, and we are TTL for Nikon. We are not TTL for Sony, and I use that word yet very big. Um, but uh, I'll quickly go through the presentation. Like I said, it's just a few minutes. If you have any questions during the presentation, please stop and ask. Um, so this is the OCF. We call it off-camera flash system. So everything that you're going to see today is associated with packs, head, or just a head, and all the accessories are called OCF, meaning off-camera flash, all right? So meaning a flash that is not on the top of your camera. Um, when, this, when this was first introduced, uh, I hate the word and I hate the saying, but it really was a game changer and still is. Uh, they, they, um, I love this quote. Um, it, it really does, when you start shooting with this thing, and, I, and don't get me wrong, I was a guy who never shot TTL, I never used this kind of, I'm like, I, I have to give it a shot. I mean, I was one of the people who were recommending doing certain things with it, and it really feels right. It's just simple to use, it's easy to use, it gets you in the, as close to the exposure and lighting that you want in the beginning, and then you have the option of changing it in a bunch of different ways. So these are some of the features. <coughs> Can you guys see on that screen over there too? Just checking, okay. So some of the features. Uh, it has Air TTL, right now it's for Nikon and camera, uh, Canon. It's uh, 500 watt seconds, it's nine f-stop uh, range, high speed sync. Anybody here, you guys have used high speed sync before? It allows you to shoot, high speed sync allows you to shoot at a higher shutter speed than the, uh, than a, a, the standard DSLR camera will. So if the camera shutter, top shutter speed on shooting flash is, 200th of a second, it will allow you go, in most cases, up to 8,000th of a second, okay? Uh, 220 flashes at full power, 50,000 at the lowest power setting. I've used this many, many times, shooting it completely TTL. I've shot an entire event the entire night. At the end of the night, 
there was still a quarter battery power left. I just put another battery in just because I felt comfortable doing it, but I didn't have to. I could have probably shot in TTL the entire night, and I shoot a lot of images, way more than I should. Um, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, so, and, and you could shoot up to 20 frame bursts, um, 19,000 of a second flash duration, and it's absolutely cordless, meaning that there is nothing attached to it. I'm gonna take a remote, I'm gonna put it on the top of the camera, and I am gonna fire this thing, and I can control everything right from that remote on, uh, to, to work with this unit, okay? So, um, it's won all kind of awards. This is just one of them, but they've won tons and tons of awards. Uh, the next product is the B2. And B2 came out after the B1. Um, it filled another niche in another area that we were kind of missing. One of the things about the B1, uh, and, and I'm gonna give you the, there, there's some negatives to it, and there's, uh, some people consider it a positive, some people consider it a negative. The head weighs six pounds. So if you're walking around or you're running around shooting, when, can you get that pole out for me? So if you're walking around and shooting, um, oh, there it is, thanks. Uh, and you're shooting, the, one of the problems with it is, is that if you're trying to carry six pounds around, and I do a lot of this stuff, where I will take this and I'll put it on a stick like this, my assistant will carry it around on a stick. I, I, I don't feel that, I mean, I feel comfortable with it on a stick, I don't have a problem with it, because if it falls, I know where to get it fixed, unlike that TV set. Um, so, but, but hanging a six pound light over the top of somebody's head like this, it, it doesn't make me feel super comfortable. So, um, and, and even though I'd, I'd have it rigged up so it wouldn't you know, hit somebody, I would still, prefer to go to something different. So that's one of the reasons that they came up with the, the B2, which has a head and a pack, but the head weighs a pound, pound and a half maybe. It's, and I mean, it's super lightweight. So you, you have the, in this case, you have the best of both worlds. Plus, if you want to, you can put this on a bracket and literally put it over the top of your camera. Even though we call it off camera flash, it could be off over camera flash or something, all right? So some of the features of this. So that one is 500 watt seconds. This is 250 watt seconds. What does that mean? 500 to 250 watt seconds, the difference is, is one f-stop of light. So everybody's going, oh my God, you know, 250, it's so much less, and it's the, the price and the difference is not that much. Well, the difference is, is one f-stop. So if I decide that I want to shoot at 400 ISO, and I put that at 200 ISO, now they're giving me equal output. You understand? So that they're, they're equal to the amount of light that each one of them can put out. It's just one f-stop difference, one, one ISO difference, meaning you're gonna double whatever the ISO, 200 to 400 or 200 to 100. And that's the only difference, one f-stop, all right? The other thing is you have a two head capability, which is kind of nice. So if I wanna set up one light and put up another light, I have a lot of photographers, a lot of guys. As a matter of fact, one of the guys, the uh, shooter for the Times, a guy named Fred Conrad. Um, he goes out and he just showed me a bunch of stuff that he did where he literally went and we were talking about this. I'll show you, where's the bag that comes in? Okay. So Fred, Fred is a photographer that was one of the first photojournalists that I work with and I, and I do, oh shoot, I do a lot of, uh, here, I just moved it back, perfect, okay. Um, wasn't knocking over the camera into the TV, that's good. So, um, and one of the things that we talked about was Fred literally used to go out with a cart pulling stuff and try to, and most of the time have an assistant. Lots of times he couldn't do it. Now he takes the entire B2 system in this bag, the entire B2 system, the pack, two heads, all the lighting accessories stuck to the outside or clipped onto the outside, and he goes to a location. And the most important part about it is he takes it with him. How many people here have tripods? How many people actually use their tripods? Right, the reason you don't use tripods is because they're a pain in the ass to carry with you. When I go out on a job now, I, I don't even think about it. Before, I, you know, I'd go out and I'd have to have a, a bunch of equipment to take lighting with me. Now, if I'm going anywhere, I'm, I'm leaving, I was in Dubai, took it with me. I'm going, to, uh, uh, I'm going to Sweden in three weeks, I'm taking it with me. Do I, do I have a reason that I'm going there to use it? Absolutely not. Um, but it's, it's just simple and lightweight to carry, so why not just throw it on the plane? It doesn't really make a difference. A couple of things about the pack and the heads. Two head capability, truly asymmetrical. Each head is completely independently controlled. You have two dials on there, or you can control it from the remote, which I'll show you in a second. You have up to 220 flashes full power, 10,000 flashes at the lowest power setting, which means that if you're using this thing in TTL, the thing's gonna run forever. Battery charge, I, I don't know if they put it in here, but the battery charges, uh, a standard battery charge is less than an hour. So if you have two batteries, you put one on the side. This pack, the other advantage to it, by the way, is that you can charge it while you're shooting. 
So if I wanna plug this into the wall, I can charge it as it's shooting. It's still drawing off the battery, but it is charging as we're shooting. Everybody with me? No questions? That one, you cannot do it. You have to have batteries on the side and replace the batteries. Um, it gives up to 20 flashes a second. Flash duration is 1 15,000th of a second. Has patent pending, which the other one does as well, this high speed sync. Um, and, uh, and it has light shaping, and that's a joke because it says we have 150 light shapers, but we have a lot, lot more than that. I don't know why we kept it to 150. So I mentioned earlier that we're TTL with Nikon and with Canon. So if you, any of you have been to any of the photo shows, WPPI, or seen any of our ads in magazines, you'll see anywhere between 50 and 100 photographers listed there. So the best photographers in the world use this equipment. And they use it because, number one, they can rent it anywhere in the world. Number one rented gear in the world is Profoto. You can go literally anywhere in the world and you will find Profoto. Um, uh, any major city, for sure, somebody has Profoto that they're renting to you. And uh, again, probably owns about 80% of the world market, between 70 and 80% of the world market. In New York here, it's closer to 95% of the world, 95% uh, of New York market in terms of rentals. So you go to any rental house and you should be able to get what you need. Um, so with portability, on and off camera flash, meaning that you can use it as I just showed you on the stick, or you can use it on the top. There's a bracket, and I think I, I may even have one with me. I'll show it to you. But you can use it on the bracket and use that over the top of camera. So somebody here mentioned that they have D1s. I forgot who it was. It was you mentioned. So one of the things that I also do is I don't shoot really like kind of uh, weddings or portraits or that kind of I, I mean, I do portraits. I don't do weddings. But I've done, um, uh, I've done event photography where I go in and, like, for example, Sony will ask me to come to an event and shoot some images. But one of the problems with those events for me is that I always go into the events and the rooms are always really, really dark, right? So kind of like this, you take a picture and the background either goes black or you have to drag your shutter so far that you're going to get movement in the front of the picture. So what I do is I take my B1 or B2 and I have this either on camera or somebody holding it on a stick for me. And I walk around and I do a shoot where my assistant is carrying this on a stick and he's pointing at the subject and I have the camera and this light set up for TTL. The remote that I'm using will also fire the D1s. So I used to do it with B1s, but now I do it with the D1s. And I turn those on, this has, not, this has, TTL, uh, has TTL groups, A, B, and C. Uh, the D1 has TTL groups, but it doesn't, it has the TTL groups, but doesn't do TTL. So I put them in groups D, E, or F, which are non-TTL groups, but on the same channel. So those lights are constantly firing. They're plugged into a wall. I don't have to worry about them. They're plugged in the wall. They're constantly firing. Give me the room light always looks the same. Now the subjects, as they're moving in and out of me, the exposure keeps changing because this is TTL. So the, both lights are firing. I get the room exposure looks beautiful every time, and it looks the same every time, which is cool, because the room looks like it's naturally lit. Uh, sometimes I'll gel them or do something else to make it look a little warmer. But, uh, and I use this, and no matter where I am in the room, it doesn't change the exposure of that. The only thing that changes is what's in front of me. So high-speed sync. What is high-speed sync? So we have our own patented high-speed sync. Um, there's hypersync and high-speed sync. Some people get those two things confused. High-speed sync allows your camera and your flash to match each other at a higher shutter speed than you would normally have if you were just doing straight on-camera flash, okay? Which means that you can go, instead of 250th of a second, you know how what happens when you shoot 250th of a second and, or you go above 250th of a second and 500th of a second and your just camera set up with no high speed at all? What happens is you get a black line in your image, right? Because the, sh the, the, the shutter can't keep up with the flashes or can't match the speed of the flash. So what we do is we take pulsing flashes, right? So the flash is just pulsing exposures and it's giving you very, very short bursts of light and your camera, as it hits that 8,000 of a second, is capturing a piece of the light. The reason that we don't try to do it where we're capturing an arc or a top of that piece of light is because you could get the end of the light, you could get the beginning of the light, so you may get it hotter or darker. Here, you're getting a consistent output of light, but very quickly. All right, and that allows you to do two things. Why do you use high-speed sync? You use high-speed sync for two reasons. One, if you want to bring the background down. So let's say I'm outside and I want to bring my exposure, my, my uh, ambient light down, and I'm still shooting with flash. The, it, basically, you put it into high-speed sync, and what it will do is it's going to bring the background down as I go higher in shutter speed. 
Everybody with me on that? Higher shutter speed, it brings the background down. The other thing you can do with it is, now I can shoot because I can shoot higher shutter speed, I can shoot more wide open on my exposure. So the two reasons to use high speed sync for my world are one, to get a shallow depth of field, which this has, so you throw that background out of focus, and the other reason is to bring the background down and make it darker. So uh, we talk about over 150 light shapers um, that can make your vision a reality. The difference is, so the light shapers for these products are a bit different. One is, <clears throat> they have an LED modeling light built into them. So the LED modeling light makes this very cool. So if you guys have used anything that has tungsten modeling lights in it, what you'll notice is that they're very, very hot. So what they did is, because this is LED, they came up with a separate set of OCF softboxes. Now, if you already own Profoto stuff, and I'll show you what I mean. If you own any Profoto light shaping tool, that was made previously, it will fit on either one of these. So we haven't changed anything. So the diameter is the same. So if you already own something, it means that you don't have to buy it again. Does that make sense? Okay. So the soft boxes, to take them apart and put them together is this easy. So you guys know how hard it is to put a soft box together, right? Most of them are a pain in the neck, especially some of ours because they're very, very hard. So, and to put them back in, you lift it up and you push it in, and it's a patent pending design here. And then I'm gonna pass this around so you guys, you'll, you'll be able to feel it, but, and I keep saying you guys, why do I say that? Maybe I was born in the Bronx or something, I was. Um, but take, take a feel and just pass that around and you'll see that how lightweight and portable that is. All of our, <coughs> all of our soft boxes have grids that you can get for the front of it. So if you want to grid it, and everybody here knows why we use a grid, right? So if we, want to, if we want to keep the light from spreading, we want it to focus more on the subject so that we can control the light, which is what I'm all about is control. Um, that, that is what you use to do it with, okay? So you're going to use those grids. And I'll show you how the grids attach in a second. Can you find me the three-foot octa, or the two-foot octa grid? It should be right on that table, okay? So... So one of the other things that we've, and I'm going to show you some, some, some things that we came up with, but what we were asking photographers, if they have this thing, this is actually before some of this came out, if you had this and you wanted, to, you wanted to get accessories for this, like hard accessories, what's the price range? And most of the photographers came out, look, I don't want to spend more than 100 bucks on, a, on a, an accessory, right? We're not talking about softbox, we're talking about like the harder grids. So I think these are $89 or $99 now for an entire set of grids. And there's one, if you can grab the grid set back there for me. Thank you. So the entire grid set with three grids, a pouch to hold it in, and an adapter to put on here is $89, uh, maybe it's $90. So this is, the, and this is the grid. It pops in and out just by doing this. So you have a 5, a 10, and a 20-degree grid. And this piece, I'm not going to put it on, but it fits right onto here or right onto the other one. So all our existing lighting accessories will work with this. All of our new lighting accessories will work with this. And then we have some, like I said, I wouldn't use this on a B1. I wouldn't use this on a, something with a hot modeling light, but other than that, I would. Um, thank you. And so, uh, so we, most of our stuff came out with that in mind. We have a snoot for the front of it, which is stackable with the grid. So if I want to put the grid on, I could put the snoot on top of the grid and lock that in. I think we have one of those on the table as well. Um, we also have barn doors which uh, the barn doors also have a, uh, a gel holder built into them. And the barn door, oh, this, this is the snoot, and then we have a barn door kit back there somewhere on the table. And the snoot can either fit on by itself, or I can put it on the top of the grid set and lock it over and turn it. Does that make sense? So if I really want to focus the light, and I really want to have that narrow beam of light hitting a specific part of a subject, I can do it with this. And the cool thing is, with the two head kit, or with two of those heads, I literally have the ability to manage the light any way I want with the two-head kit. And it comes, they all come with some kind of soft case. So our soft boxes, um, all the rods, by the way, the ends of the rods are color-coded because the speed ring that we have for it, if you pass that around, take a look, the speed ring has, has color coding in it. And so the end of the rods have little color, little color rods on the end of it that show you the little color, and that you just match up the color with this, and you literally pop it in, and I'm not joking with you, that easy. And now we have a new beauty dish, which I mentioned to you before, and I think, I don't that's what I passed around. No, that's not. So this is the new beauty dish. 
um, if I'm using it with the B1, I tend to use a dome on the front of the B1. So there is a glass dome that you can get for the front of the B1. They have made it, all, both of these pieces, with these domes on it instead of the, the glass dome that sticks out because if anybody here has owned any previous pro photo equipment and has broken one of those domes, they know how expensive they are. So they really made these things to travel. So this piece, if you want, this piece pops out. I'll, I'll, uh, I could put it on now, but, or I could put it on later. But So this piece pops out, and then this piece pops in. When you're not drinking in the morning, it pops in fantastic. It's amazing. It does not go in the B2, so it's only for the B1. I don't think I fit it in there perfectly, but... Just for, just for the sake of showing it to you. And what it's going to do is it's going to just show you, it, will, it, will, it fills out the, the beauty dish a little bit better. It doesn't mean you have to have it because it does a good job without it, but it does, I, I like the job it does better with it. And if I'm using it with certain uh, reflectors, okay, there it is, that's it. But if I'm using it with certain reflectors like, um, can you get me the, uh, the travel reflector there? So I'm using this light with certain reflectors. I like to use the dome. But 90% of the time, the flat front would be fine, especially in soft boxes. Unless you're going to a four by six soft box, you really don't need a dome, okay? And I was not a believer in that, and I had to prove it to myself, and I have to prove everything to myself. I proved that as well. So um, it's on the top there, right on the top of the table. The flat, all the way in the back? That's it. So this is, this is what's called a narrow beam reflector. And the narrow beam reflector, if you use it on here, and I'll just pop this on for a second. So if I want this, so it has a zoom range on it. So if I want to fill this out, it works better with the dome. Everybody can see? <laughs> see? OK. And what's weird about this dome, what's weird about this is all pro photo, I'm sorry, blinding half the people in here. But what's interesting about pro photo's reflectors is all the reflectors have this, uh, this little piece on the front of it. And the piece on the front of it basically says, if I put this in, in a position number, let's say six or eight, what's going to happen? It will show you how the light will come out and shape, right? Which is a cool thing. So now I know if I want to throw light a great distance, I know what light shaper to use. This is one of the few light shapers that we have that is the opposite of all others. Meaning that if I take this light and I zoom it forward, it should narrow the beam of light. But with this one, it does the opposite. So if I pull this back, and I'll show you what I mean. Let me see if I can make this a little bit darker. All right, so I'll try to show it to you this way. But as I pull this further back, it narrows the beam of light. I don't know if you can see it there, but I... I can do it on the wall. Yeah, you know what? I can. Who said that? <laughs> Smart man. I just don't want to get it too close to TV sets. <laughs> All right, so... Okay, so if I take this light and I start to push it forward, uh, I push it forward, it stays flat. Now let's see if it will work with, if you'll be able to see it. it, it I don't have enough distance here, but, but, if, but what happens is that the hot, the center spot gets very hot. And as I get further away from it, and I won't, it won't be able to see on that wall, but as I get further away from it and I pull it back, it actually creates a hot spot in the middle, and I'll just turn it to you for a second so you guys can see. But you see that it creates this hot spot in the middle. That was just to wake everybody up, really. That's all that was for. Okay. Make sure everybody's up. Any questions about that? Most of the stuff I'm making up. So if you guys are going along with it, it's awesome. Did you say that for the bigger boxes, you take off the glass? It would be a good idea. If, no, only if I'm using a very large soft box, I, I, I put this other dome on it. If I'm using a 4 by 6 soft box, I would probably use a dome with it. I wouldn't use a 4x6 softbox with this head. That's just my opinion, but I've used a 3x4 softbox with this head and had no problem. I just think the spread of light is more even when you have, when you have a dome on it for very large softboxes, and I mean very large. The biggest one we make in the OCF ones, the less expensive ones, are, is a 2x3, but I've used it with a 3x4 and had no problem. Okay, any other, anything? Yes? Can you move back, though? What's that? Can you move back? Back or forward with that? What do you mean, with the zoom? Yeah, yeah the zoom's in and out. No, just, you know, just move back. The focus beam or the whole light? No, you're, 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 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I can do it either way. Yep. Okay. We also came out with this new gel kit. It's a, we call it the gel starter kit. There's two versions of it. I believe it's in the $50 range. Uh, this is the, this is one kit. Let's see if there's a gel holder and a kit there somewhere, unless. Uh, so what it is, is we came out with a kit that has, uh, we have color correction and we have uh, gels that will just give you um, color correction gels and we also have other gels. And what, they, what it comes with is basically one of these attachments, which is the same as we use for the grid kit. And it comes with these two holders, two of these. And it comes with a kit that has color correction as well as uh, color effects gels that are in here. Um, and if you decide that you want to get the full range of color effects gels, you get another package like this and you buy that. And if you want to get the full collection of uh, color correction gels, you just buy a, another, a full kit and it will give you everything. The one that, the starter kit that comes like this with that case, I want to show that little case that it comes with. That comes with this case, it comes like this and you get one of these with it. But if you want to buy the other two separately, you can. Any questions about this? Uh, and those are the color, color correction and those are the creative color um, gels. So the first thing that you have to do, and you won't be able to see this, but in the top right hand corner, there's a button that you press. And that button says TTL manual. Well, the first thing you gotta do is turn it on, which is the hard part for me. The on off button, you press the on off button. Then I generally check to make sure that the firmware is up to date, which is another way to do that, but that's just me. Um, but most of the time what I do is I just hit this on and off for manual TTL. And in this case, I just set it on TTL and I leave it on TTL. Now I go down to the bottom and it says channel it is channel one through eight. And for our case here, we'll just set it on channel three. Now I go over to the unit. I turn this on. And now what I have to do is to get this channel over here to match with the channel from the air remote so that this unit can talk to the remote that's inside of this. So all I do is I press this button and it starts to flash. And what channel did I say, three? So I'm gonna turn this till it says three. And now it's reading three B. So I can set it up for three A, three B, three C, three D, three E, thank you. So now if I fire my camera, it's gonna fire with that. That's it. And now if I turn it to my audience, and I don't even know what I have it set up on here, but turn to my audience, take a shot, and I, I have no card in my camera, but shoot. Uh, they're, in my, they're in my camera bag, in the front pouch of my camera bag. I'll, I'll, I'll grab them out later. But anyway, the exposure, trust me, was really good. When you step up, you'll see how good the first exposure was. Then the next thing that we do is after you take a couple of shots in TTL, I show you that you can do something, so I just shot that in TTL. You're the same distance, you haven't changed, right? So if I take another shot of you, the exposure will be pretty much the same. But if I decide that I want the exposure and I want to adjust it manually, if I'm using a Nikon or Canon flash, I can't do that. Because the flash goes back up to full power immediately. Mine stayed exactly where the power was, was before. So when I took the picture of you, that's the same power that I had coming out of this. And it does something called exposure lock. So it locks the exposure into place so that if I go over here now and I switch this to manual and this is set on 3B and I put a box around B, now I can go intense of a stop or press and hold it and go in full stops minus and I can change my exposure the way I want it to. Does that make sense? So now I go in and now I'm tweaking each light individually. I can go and put this one on A, another one on B, another one on C. And by the way, if I want to do that and I want these two systems to work together, they work together fine. I just have to set this on group A, maybe those on group B. You know, the front, the front may be A, the sides may be B, and the background may be C. Right? And that way I can stand here and I can adjust those. Plus, if I decide to, I can literally turn the modeling, uh, what, what group are we in here? So modeling light on and off from here. I can turn the head on and off from here. I think I just did that. I could turn it on and off here, up to 300 feet away. And if I'm using it in the manual mode, I can do it up to 1,000 feet away. It is so simple and it's so easy to use. And that's why I love it, because it gets you to the first spot. You take your first picture, you look at it in TTL, you decide if you like it. And if you want to continue to shoot in TTL, you can. 
If you don't want to shoot in TTL and you want to go to manual, just switch it to manual. Now, but you've gotten there first. You don't have to have an exposure meter. Uh, again, depending on what I'm shooting, I sometimes will still use it, but in, if I'm shooting something very quick and I got to get it banged out, I don't use an exposure meter anymore. Now I just check the back of the camera, look to see if the exposure is in the ballpark, and then if I want to tweak it, I can tweak it manually or I can tweak it in TTL. The only other thing that you have to know is, so if I put it in manual, I can adjust it from here. If I have it in TTL and I decide with one light, I want to adjust the exposure. So I want my TTLs, like say I thought this picture was a little bit dark, so I want to overexpose it a little bit. I want more light to hit you. From this camera, I do it from the camera itself. With Canon, there's a, a button here that allows you to do flash compensation. You can see it on the back of this. And I turn this dial and it gives me flash compensation. And what that will do is it will leave my TTL always overexposing or whatever I tell it to do, it will keep my flash always ex overexposing or underexposing. So sometimes when you're shooting TTL, you want to leave it in TTL, but you want to be able to control the flash power to have it a little bit brighter than the TTL is actually reading for whatever reason, or you want it to be a little bit darker than the TTL is reading, and you just do it from the flash exposure compensation. If I have multiple lights, more than one light, I adjust it in TTL, I adjust it from A, B, and C. Does that make sense? I use A, B, and C to adjust these. Control the ratio. Exactly. So A, B, and C, when it's, it's like using a Nikon flash or Canon flash. They adjust ratios between lights. It's not actually, actually f-stops. It's adjusting a ratio, meaning that the exposure I'm trying to get on my main subject is still going to be the properly exposed image. But the other light, the second or the third light, will ratio off of this light. Does that make sense? So if I want to change this from uh, this one, you want to be 1A or something, and that be 1B. OK, so all I do is over here, I press this in. Uh, sorry. All right, I press this in. Come on. OK, and until it's there, I press it until it flashes. If I press and hold this and turn this dial and hold it in, it's going to change numbers. If I just turn it, it changes groups without pushing it in and holding it. So now it's on group run 5. Let's go to 5A, right? So over here on this unit, it's a little bit different. And I planned on showing you hands-on, but because you really can't see it here, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. So if I press and hold this in, the first thing I have to do is to get this thing to talk to that air remote. And that's on channel 5 now, I said, right? So I want this to be on 5B. How do I do it? I press in the sync button, and the sync gives me a couple of options. It says slave, it has nothing, and then it says air. When it says air, I know that I'm syncing with this. But what channel am I on? So I go to the next thing, which says set. I press in the set button, and I turn this dial. And as I'm turning this dial, it's changing the channel. Either dial. Any dial I turn will change the channel. So now I'm going to put this on channel 5. And I'm going to put this on channel 5. And then I press set again, and it gives me letters. So now I go to those letters, and I set this up. That one is B or A? Yeah, a. a. So I'm going to put this on B. I press the button again. I press it again. And now this is set up on 5B. That's it. You don't have to touch it the rest of the night. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.